Hi lovelies! September is finally here, which I know for a lot of us means it's time to head back to school and back to work after what I hope was an incredibly relaxing summer. But I do know that that transition can be a little busy. So all month long, I'm going to be sharing easy weeknight ideas that are all about making your lives in the kitchen easier. And today I've got three awesome one pot recipes for you that can all be made in 15 minutes or less. So let's be honest, there is a lot to love. All three of today's tasty recipes are being featured on healthymealplans.com, which is our awesome meal planning site. If you haven't checked it out yet, I really hope you will. It allows you to browse hundreds of recipes, create your meal plan for the week, and then generate your grocery list, which can be taken straight to the supermarket. We also have specialty meal plan bundles prepared for all sorts of diets like vegan, vegetarians, we have low carb meal plan prepared. It all depends on what your dietary preferences are. So let's just say there is something for everyone on the site. Now without further ado, let's get to some one pot dinner ideas starting with this amazing garlic, shrimp and white bean skillet. I love this recipe because it can seriously be cooked up in less than 10 minutes and features one of my favorite proteins, shrimp. Of course, shrimp is a great protein for weeknight cooking because it cooks up in no time and also has a built-in mechanism to tell you when it's ready by turning pink. So I'm gonna get started with a nice helping of olive oil in a big skillet like this. I wanna get that olive oil nice and hot for my shrimp. Once that oil has had a chance to heat up, I am going to get some garlic into my pan as well as some red pepper flakes. And we're just gonna give this a second or two to get nice and fragrant. Then we can go ahead and add our shrimp to the pan. As you can see, the shrimp has already been peeled, but I've actually left the tails on because the tails have a ton of amazing seafood flavor. You're welcome to take them off if you want to. Our shrimp will only take a few minutes to cook, so this is a good time to hit it up with some salt and pepper. And then we'll just keep it moving in that yummy garlic and pepper goodness. And let it cook away for between, say, three and four minutes. That's really all it takes for your shrimp to be fully cooked and nice and pink and opaque. Once your shrimp is fully cooked, you can go ahead and add some wine to the pan. If you don't want to add wine, you could use some chicken broth instead. I like to let my wine simmer away for just a minute or two. That way the alcohol evaporates and all you're left with is the amazing flavor. We just want to add a little bit of moisture into this and use that liquid to get up all of those yummy bits that have sort of seared onto the bottom of the pan. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add the remaining ingredients to my pan. Instead of pasta or rice, which I traditionally pair with shrimp in a recipe like this, today I'm actually using some canned navy beans. If you don't have navy beans on hand, white kidney beans or chickpeas would be great alternatives. But I love the idea of using beans in this recipe because they add a ton of great protein and fiber to it. I'm also going to add some cherry tomatoes here that I've just cut in half. And I'm also going to add a good heaping helping of baby spinach to the pan. Never worry if you feel like the spinach is overwhelming your pan. Spinach shrinks down to like a quarter of its original volume in no time. And at this point, this dish is ready to be devoured. How amazing does that look in under 10 minutes? Healthy, satisfying, and very shrimple to prepare. Next for something equally effortless but just as delicious, I am making this amazing turkey sausage, broccolini, and orzo pasta dish that seriously guys, you cannot help but love. For this recipe, I am actually using some smoked turkey sausage. You could use pork sausage here, but I love turkey sausage just to switch things up. I have got a nonstick skillet heating up on the stove with just a little bit of oil. As soon as that oil's hot, I'm going to get my smoked turkey sausage into my skillet and let it cook up for between, say, three and four minutes. The great part about a sausage like this is that it comes pre-cooked. So really, when you get it in the pan, all you're looking to do is heat it through and get it a little crispy on the edges. Once you've developed ample crispness on all of your sausage, you can go ahead and add your broccolini to the pan. Could do this with traditional broccoli, but lately I've been having a bit of a love affair with broccolini. It's been available in such abundance at my supermarket, I just kind of want to put it in everything. Once you start to get that really nice color on your broccolini, you can go ahead and get in here with some garlic. I'm just gonna let that heat up for a minute. And I'm also going to now add my orzo. I want my orzo to cook for just a minute or so until it starts to become shiny. This helps it sort of absorb all of that great flavor. At this point, it is time to add our broth. I recommend a really good quality chicken broth in this recipe. 
Once it reaches the boil, we'll reduce our heat a little bit, cover it, and let it cook away for about 10 minutes or until that orzo has absorbed all the liquid. It's really important to stir this regularly because of course you don't want it sticking to the bottom of your pan. And in less than 10 minutes, guys, this is what you end up with. We have just a couple things that could make this better. I'm gonna hit this with some salt and pepper, and then I'm also going to stir in some freshly grated Parmesan. It really takes the texture of this to the next level. It gives it such a creaminess. You always have the option to skip the Parmesan cheese here, but I really think it adds a ton of great flavor. Easy, breezy, and tastes absolutely heavenly in 15 minutes or less. Finally, lovelies, for you vegetarians and vegans out there, or pretty much anyone wanting to eat more plant-based recipes in their diet, I have got this amazing easy mushroom ramen for you. It comes together in an absolute flash and just happens to also taste amazing. It all starts once again with my nonstick skillet heating up on the stove. I'm just gonna get some oil heated up there, and to that I'm going to add a huge helping of mushrooms. Now, as you can see, I've got loads of beautiful cremini mushrooms here that I've thinly sliced, but you could use any combination of mushrooms you wanted to here. Some white button mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, or shiitake mushrooms would be great additions as well. Once our oil is hot, we're gonna go ahead and get these mushrooms into the pan. As we know, when it comes to mushrooms, they lose about half their volume during the cooking process, so this pile of mushrooms is going to become just an itty bitty bit of mushrooms. After four to five minutes of cooking, your mushrooms will start to get nice and golden and start releasing their moisture, and that means it is time to get some garlic into the pan. We'll let that garlic heat up for another minute or so, and then we are going to add some greens to this. I'm using some baby bok choy and snow peas in this recipe, but snap peas, green beans, broccoli, or asparagus, all would be welcome here. We'll let those cook up for a minute or two, and then we can go ahead and add our mushroom broth to the skillet. So the idea here is not to make a soup. We wanna use just enough broth to hydrate our noodles so that they cook completely, and then the rest of the broth is going to evaporate off, and all we'll be left with is the amazing mushroom flavor. For even more great savory flavor, the secret ingredient in this dish is actually some miso paste. So if you're not familiar, miso paste is soy based. You can usually find it in the same section of your supermarket with the tofu, and it's essentially going to just dissolve into our broth. We'll just give this a stir and let that broth come to a simmer, and once it's reached a simmer, we can add our ramen straight into the pan. What I love about this recipe is we don't even need to cook our ramen separately. We're going to do it right in the same skillet. You'll see it only takes two or three minutes for that ramen to start breaking down and the liquid to evaporate. And then the final step of this dish is just adding a splash of soy sauce to taste. You can serve this up with some freshly chopped green onion and you have a dinner you will absolutely love. If you wanted to add a little more protein to this dish, some tofu, some chicken, or some shrimp would all work really well, but it's also delicious just as is. I would recommend making an extra batch because it also eats really well for lunch the next day. Guys, I hope you will give all three of these yummy, easy recipes a try. And if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because as always, I love seeing your kitchen creations. Keep in mind, all three of these delicious recipes are being featured on HealthyMealPlans.com, so you can find them there, and they're also linked in the description box below. Finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there is lots more dinner deliciousness where this came from.